Episode 3 of Bad News Lovers brings you Heathcliff, who I am shocked is still considered to be a romantic hero by a great many people. I mean, technically he is because he's written in a particular style that we'll talk about in a little bit, but what is wrong with people who unironically call him a romantic hero? Let us investigate. So technically speaking, Heathcliff is a Byronic hero, which is the worst of all romantic heroes in my opinion. A Byronic hero is somebody who is basically <laughs> modeled on Lord Byron himself because that's how he modeled it. A Byronic hero is somebody who is handsome but misunderstood. A man ostracized by society for his wild and savage passions. A man of towering intellect and unfortunate love decisions. A tragic hero. A lover that generations will remember. Kind of like what Byron thought and hoped that people would do in his own lifetime, if not after. I always make fun of Lord Byron and I feel like partially it's because I grew up reading George Hare, who made fun of him all the time. And I don't know if it's entirely fair because he is a good poet and he did have some really good ideas and he gave us Ada Lovelace, which he gets points for that. And he was very nice to Mary Shelley and so on and so forth. So even though he did have a petty side to him, um, I don't think he was all bad, but he's just the kind of person who just really gets on my nerves and so I talk about him all the time and I mock him. But he's dead so he doesn't really care. It is funny however that the greatest Byronic hero is not somebody whom he wrote but a woman from Yorkshire. I don't know if he would have really appreciated that irony but it cracks me up. So Heathcliff is a young man who is found as an orphan and there are these hints in the novel that are never quite actualized that he might be mixed race or f of a different race and um, he's adopted by basically the worst family in Yorkshire who are sort of half civilized themselves and then abuse this little boy and raise him in this toxic environment where he is mentally, emotionally and physically abused his entire life and the only person whom he loves to an unhealthy degree is the daughter of the house, Catherine, who grows up to become a young lady and then realizes that she needs to fit into society and the way forward might be to marry somebody who is quote unquote normal and that would not be Heathcliff who in addition to being raised as a sort of slave in the household is also poor and clearly her social inferior. Heathcliff despises her for making a practical decision rather than listening to her own heart and she becomes the final nail in his coffin in that, you know, that is the last bit of rejection that he can handle and he basically slips into what can only be termed as madness. He lies, he kidnaps, he marries a woman he doesn't love and then tortures her for no good reason other than the fact that her brother married Catherine. He is obsessed with Catherine to the point where he literally digs up her corpse and is jealous that she is laid to rest beside her husband. Even after her death, he is obsessed with her and would literally haunt her ghost. You've heard of the dead haunting the living? This novel is about the opposite. And while he is presented as this man in love or a man driven to madness by love, it's also important to note that he literally has no idea what love is. He has never received anything, even remotely resembling love from any of the people around him. And the one person who does love him, his wife, he rejects her. And there is all this talk about this metaphysical connection that he shares with Catherine and how their souls are one. And Catherine says it, you know, in the novel where she says, I am Heathcliff, which is again, really unhealthy. These are two people who grew up in extraordinary circumstances and were thrown together by those and don't really have a personality apart from each other. And Catherine tries, she tries to be someone else and she tries to be better than she is raised. 
but that childhood of just emotional deprivation when all they had was each other is so strong i don't even think it can be termed love heathcliff definitely belongs to that genre of romantic lovers who conflate love with ownership and i think that lies at the root of my distaste for this novel like i mentioned in my video about the book the prose in this novel does such a good job of lifting everything that you find yourself tempted to gloss over certain things but for me what it really does is it lays the toxicity of their relationship even more bare i'm not disturbed by their relationship i am actively repelled this is not a case of say high school sweethearts or two people who grew up together and their childhood sweethearts and they found each other no it's a story of him being fixated on her because she's the only source of anything good in his life and her being completely fixated on him because he contains all the passion in her own nature that she can never find in her marriage or in any other person. Catherine is really attracted to the destruction in his nature. He is not her salvation, he is her complete and utter destruction. And he thinks she is his salvation, but it is one that he can never get. And the end of the novel where, you know, there's a suggestion that they might have turned into ghosts who haunt the countryside. I thought that was perhaps the best ending this book could have had because obviously these two assholes would turn out to be ghosts. But then, you know, continuing my thesis that a lot of these literary characters are redeemed by the men who play them, let's look at the adaptations. The one enduring adaptation has been the one by Laurence Olivier who specialized in characters of these sort just problematic men with sexual charisma and then if you look at all the later adaptations it's a continuing pattern so you have richard burton for example who is problematic in his real life as well as on screen you have timothy dalton who's played a surprising number of bronte heroes all of them forgotten for some reason and then more recently, you have Tom Hardy, which of course you have Tom Hardy. These are all men who have a great deal of sexual charisma. I mean, Dalton was literally Bond, but also do really well in roles where they are hurting women. And when we watch these men portray these characters, and in particular this character, it becomes a little difficult to solely concentrate on the actions of the character which range from everything from like kidnapping to murder or possible murder and instead you're sort of swept up in their own charisma same as Catherine is with Heathcliff so the audience is basically in the position of Catherine and you have the actor playing Heathcliff which is also the reason why all these adaptations I mean they also had Catherine which isn't excellent role for a woman and she has a great deal going on internally but we don't really think about the women who've played a great Catherine. There is a distinction between the women who are cast in the role of Catherine and the men who play Heathcliff because Heathcliff is definitely the focus of sexual attention. A lot of you have told me before that you haven't read the novel or else you've read it and you really hated him and I guess the greatest value of this character and of this book really is that it stands as a permanent display of what can happen if one doesn't have access to a good therapist because this entire book even the good characters are people who need a good therapist and possibly medication and one or two of them can do with a straitjacket as well for more videos, please hit the subscribe button.